Last week, as Sonny learned from Ava that Jason was alive, his not-so-dead best friend turned to Carly for help having been shot by the gunman. Of course, that's when Anna and John showed up to search Carly's place, where he was hiding. Coming up, Sonny's called into the police station and Anna tells him, We don't know that he shot Dante, Sonny's response. But you don't know he didn't. Jason is on the move and ends up at the footbridge, where two people catch him. Maxie's voiceover says, I do know Jason won't give up without a fight. Could it be Maxie and Spinelli are there to help their old friend? After Jason escapes Carly's place, Drew shows up, and well, at least one person isn't happy Jason's back. He tells Carly, we both know you are going to be there for him, and I'm not going to be here to watch. Is this the end of Drew and Carly? Finally, at the hospital, Sonny tells Sam, we were able to get an ID. Sam asks, who? How will Sam react to the news that Jason has been working with the people, one of whom shot Dan? Jason's big return to General Hospital is finally here. Well, just about. The show seems to have been building to something big and bad as he blows back into Port Charles. But then, that's pretty much Jason Morgan in a nutshell. Although there is a chance this is all still misdirection. But his return has left us with a slew of questions. No, we aren't talking about how he survived. This is Port Charles. It was all but a given that he survived. Never mind the how. No, our questions are more along the lines of what's he going to do when he gets back and who he's going to be doing it with. We know the big expectation is for him to come back with the reveal that he's the one who's been gunning for Sonny, took out Olivia Jerome, and has just been going rogue for reasons we're sure we'll find out at some point. But that can't last, can it? We can't have another permanent amnesia slash personality shift for him and sooner or later we're going to figure out what's wrong with him and why he's been carving a bloody path through the underworld. And once that happens, we'll be back to the strong, silent Jason who's driven women crazy over the years. And we got a feeling it won't be long before he's looking for love again. In all the wrong places. Would Carly, for instance, really be able to get past a rogue Jason going after the people she cares about? Would Sam turn her back on Dante after the relationship they've built? We have a feeling Liasson fans would answer a hearty no to all of the above, seeing as how they've been happily counting down the days until Jason's return, hoping this will be just the chance for a do-over. Even Rebecca Herbst herself has admitted there's still more story to tell with them as she noted a little while back that it's still hard for me to understand why the writers didn't follow through with the Liz and Jason storyline. The great thing about daytime, though, is that there's always the chance to dive back in and explore something that was dropped. And Jason's return may be just the thing to reset Jason a bit and give Liason fans the thrill they've been waiting for. Or let them down once again. You know that old saying about being careful what you wish for, though? Because in Port Charles, things rarely end up working out the way we want them. All products and services featured are independently chosen by editors. However, Soaps.com may receive a commission on orders placed through its retail links, and the retailer may receive certain auditable data for accounting purposes. General Hospital had viewers on the edge of their seats during the March 14 episode as Jason explained to Michael where he'd been since his latest death, and his story made sense. We could totally buy John and the Fed strong-arming Stone Cold into becoming a weapon against the forces of darkness. But that's obviously only one piece of the puzzle. The feds have no shortage of marksmen. They don't need Jason to be their assassin. What they might find harder to come by is an individual with mob ties as deep as Jason's. Someone that a big bad would delight in using against his or her enemies. So yes, at the end of the day, Jason is working. However, reluctantly, for the feds. But to accomplish the mission that's been set forth for him, we wager that he's had to infiltrate the underworld empire of Cyrus Renault. How can we be sure? First, let's look at Jason's actions since his resurrection. Apparently, he helped take out Bonkers Mafia queenpin Olivia Jerome. And he had to have been a part of the deliberately botched hit on Sonny and Ava. Who would want them pushing up daisies? Besides the few folks who haven't drunk, the but some mobsters are good mobsters, Kool-Aid. Cyrus. If he were to remove from the chessboard all of Port Charles' other career criminals, it would be game over and he'd have won. 
there wouldn't even be any rival mafiosos around to scoff at his I've changed mantra. Second, let's look at Jason's new ink. In Steve Burton's years away from General Hospital, he got a massive religious tattoo on his arm. It would be pretty clever of the soap to work it into the story rather than cover it up by eventually revealing that Jason got it to prove his allegiance to Pius Cyrus. If you've got it, flaunt it. This week on General Hospital, the it in question is more who as a certain someone finally returns to Port Charles. And given the amount of excitement about Jason's return, it's not surprising that the show wants to flaunt the hell out of it. As a result, the preview for the week of March 4 to 8 features numerous characters, but only one storyline which can be summed up in two words. Ironically, despite the fact we all know exactly who he is, the latest teaser, which you can watch below, doesn't actually show Steve Burton's Jason. Oh, sure. Technically, at the end, we see his back, but we never get that money shot of his handsome mug. If we didn't know better, we think that the show plans to spend the entire week building up to the big reveal. Perhaps wisely, however, General Hospital will instead give us our first glimpse of the returning actor in the episode airing Monday, March 4. Confession time. How many of us tuned into the Friday, March 1 episode assuming that the Friday cliffhanger would be our actual first glimpse at Jason? Only to be disappointed. We can't have been the only ones. Across social media, fans had a whole lot to say about the promo and what it sets up. Rose Lee's Wolf told the Facebook audience, I'm happy if Jason is back, but if they brought him back as a bad guy, I'm not going to be happy at all. Others worry about the circumstances under which Jason is returning, with a trap being set to lure the person who's been targeting Sonny out into the open. YouTuber Slouch1086 admitted to being concerned someone, Dan or Chase, might get caught in the crossfire. Many, many others, however, have been asking one very big question. Where has Jason been since he was presumed dead in that tunnel collapse? Now, we will finally get our first glimpse into the life he was leading while away from Port Charles. Did he, like Sonny during his stint in Nixon Falls, start a whole new life? And how did he seemingly wind up targeting Sonny, the man who has long been his best friend? 